Hi chemists. In the last video, we focused primarily on qualitative observations of solutions by describing them as concentrated or dilute. In this video, we'll focus now on the mathematical relationship related to the amount of solute and the amount of solvent that you have in a solution. After today, you should be able to define the molarity in terms of its mathematical formula, calculate moles, liters, or molarity of a given solution, and explain how to make a solution. Recall, concentration is a measure of the amount of solute dissolved in a given quantity of solvent. Molarity is really the most important unit that we use to describe concentration in chemistry. Molarity is calculated by using big M, and it's defined as the number of moles of solute dissolved in one liter of solution. The mathematical formula would look similar to this. Molarity equals moles of solute over liters of solution. It's very important to note that the volume is the total volume of the resulting solution and not just the solvent alone. Here are the steps needed to make a 0.5 molar solution. So notice I didn't say 0.5 molarity. Chemists usually say a 0.5 molar. What you will do is you will have to add 0.5 moles of the solute to a one liter volumetric flask half filled with distilled water. Then you will swirl the flask to dissolve the solute as much as possible. And then finally, you will fill the flask to the mark etched on the side. And if you notice in this picture, you can see this little marking right here. So the meniscus or the level of the liquid needs to touch that mark right there. To perform calculations with molarity is fairly simple. Here's an example. What is the molarity of a solution that contains 0.25 moles of sodium chloride in a 0.75 liter solution? I really like to list out all the variables that you're working with. So for example, I'll extract the molarity, the moles, and the volume right from the problem. So you can see in this problem, I'm calculating molarity. So that is going to be my question mark. I'm given the amount of moles as 0.25 moles of sodium chloride, and then I'm given a volume of 0.75 liters. You can see that everything isn't in the appropriate unit. We've got moles and moles and liters and liters. So that means all we have to do is use our formula to figure out the molarity. So we're gonna say molarity equals 0.25 moles of sodium chloride over 0.75 liters, and that will give you the molarity of 0.33 moles over liters, or you could write it as 0.33 big M, which symbolizes again molarity. That is the simplest type of problem. Let's take a look at another application. This one says, what is the volume of a 1.08 molar potassium iodide solution that would contain 0.642 moles of potassium iodide? So we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna extract all the variables. So we've got the molarity this time, and it want, we are given the moles, and we wanna know what volume. Fortunately, we have everything in the correct unit, so this is again just plugging and chugging. So we'll have 1.08 molar, equals 0.642 moles of potassium iodide over the volume. Now this one's a little bit of a different example because the algebra involved is different. So in this case, we're not just doing any dividing here. We actually have to get rid of liters on the bottom. So what we can do is we can multiply both sides by liters. And then what you'll end up seeing is that you'll have to divide the 0.642 divided by the 1.08 so that when you calculate this, you should get a volume of 0.594 liters. You may have a question about what sig figs is based off of. Usually I just look at the numbers that you're starting with. So you can see both of those numbers have three sig figs. That's why the answer has three sig figs. And again, remember molarity breaks down into moles over liters. So that's why we have to make sure that we have liters remaining and that is the unit that we're left with. 
Okay, let's try another one. This one says, how many grams of calcium bromide are dissolved in a 0.455 liters of a 0.39 molar calcium bromide solution? So again, you may be looking at this and you're like, wow, okay, there's some new numbers in here and some new information. So let's see how we can figure this out. I always recommend, again, listing out all the variables that you have in the problem. So we know this is a molarity problem. So we've got molarity as 0.39 molar. We do not have the amount of moles. So that has to be in my question mark. And then I say that it's a 0.455 liter solution. So that would have to be there. So I'm going to now solve for moles by plugging in my numbers. And then to do the algebra here, I'm going to have to multiply the 0.455 liters times that 0.39 molar. And so then you'll get moles equals 0.18 molar of, uh, excuse me, 0.18 moles of calcium bromide. But remember, this problem isn't asking about moles, it's actually asking about grams. And if you recall, the way that we can get from moles to grams is by using something called, you guessed it, the molar mass. So we're going to have to take these moles and convert them into grams by using the molar mass of calcium bromide. And the way that we did that is we'd set up a dimensional analysis calculation where we have moles of calcium bromide, and then we would have one mole of calcium bromide to the molar mass of calcium bromide. So in the past, we would do a little calculation off to the side, like you see in the upper right-hand corner. You would add those masses together, and then that would be the mass that you would plug in in the numerator there. Then when you do the calculation, you'll do 0.18 times 199.88 grams, and that will give you 36 grams of calcium bromide. So this type of example isn't necessarily more difficult, it's just that you want to check to make sure that you've actually answered the question. A lot of students make the mistake of just stopping at moles, but since this question is asking for grams, you have to take it one step further and do that bottom calculation. As with everything in chemistry class, you know this takes practice. So now you'll have an opportunity to ask questions and get some practice in. Thank you so much for watching. You did great today.